Let him up. Black Kettle. Hickok. It is four winters since you went to fight in the Brother-Brother War. You win much? Well, that's so you'd notice it. I got my skin, got this uniform, I had a horse. Where do you go now? Hay City. He will work for the Army. Oh, no, not me. The only work I want to do is hunt and sleep. Gamble, sleep, and maybe, um, well, sleep anyway. That is not much for a man like you. He speaks that way, to save his life. Many things changed since you were gone, Hickok. There was peace, until one day, one of our braves killed, and was killed. Then the soldiers came, and our brothers and sisters died. And my two sons. Peace! Soldiers, peace! I'm sorry about your sons, Black Kettle. White Bear's sorrow is deep. Deep as a summer snow. No, not all. There are men like Kikok. You must know we do not wish to fight, unless they force us. It's better that way. The armies learn new things in the Brother Brother War. They have a new rifle now, shoots 13 times without reloading. <laughs> Like this. Yeah, like that. Maybe now soldiers will not always win. Maybe they will never win again. It's a mighty peculiar way to live in peace, Black Kettle. Hickok, listen. In here is peace. But in here is war. Your soldiers must decide which it is to be. You can go now. He can't go. I'll take my pistol back. A white man of peace needs no weapon. A white man of peace could sure use a horse. It's a long walk to town. Not as much as a how have you been? Well, I'm not much on writing. <laughs> you get yourself right in here. Now, just a minute. We're pretty close in here. Uh, seating's for six folks. That's regulations. Calamity. It's Bill. I don't care if it's General Grant. It's up here with me or it's a long walk to somewhere. I'll be seeing you in town, Bill. Well, you riding or walking? <laughs> Nothing. How long you been on the army? Long enough to get here. 
what happened to your horse? Cheyenne. That's funny. We ain't had no trouble with him for quite a spell. They ain't fixing to start painting up, are they, Bill? Well, not yet, but somebody's getting repeater rifles to it. Bill. Hmm? About that regret letter that I sent you. I can't hear a word you're saying. I said about that. That was a long time ago, four years. I don't remember anything about that. Well, I just didn't know what to say. Dear Bill, I regret to inform you that it's all over between us. Yours respectfully, Calamity Jane. Legally, Martha Jane Canary. Now, what kind of language is that between friends? Well, I had some preacher fella write it for me. Well, I had some preacher fella read it to me, and it sounded like the last rites over a dog. Well, I didn't know what to say, Bill. I didn't want you to feel like you was tied up to me. I mean, you going off to the war, all like that. I didn't regret nothing. You remember that time in Abilene? Kansas City. That morning breakfast look. You ain't wiping it off, you dang mule. You're wiping it in. I can't hear a word you're saying. Drinks are on me, Bill. We'll paint the town. What there is of it. <laughs> Nothing I'd like better, eh? Just let me get washed up first. Sure. I'll be in and out of whites all day. Just ask for me. Right. See ya. At you will. Hey, you. You can't go taking that freight off there like that. That's Bill to Mr. John Latimer. I'm Latimer. Let me see your bill of lading. Calamity, would you throw down my knapsack? Just a minute, Bill. Next time, you check with the driver. Now, what was it you wanted, mister? Knapsack. Oh, yes, of course. I don't mind giving you a hand, mister, but not this one. Sorry. I don't need any help, but... Thanks, anyway. Bill, you look beautiful to me, but you are kind of raunchy. You need some grub money? Stop borrowing from a woman. I'll lead you straight to hell. I'll auction off my clothes first. Let me know where and when. <laughs> I'd like to see you come in an officer, friend. What's your business? Well, now, if I wanted to tell you, I wouldn't be asking to see him, would I? United States Army document. Well, I figured as much. I couldn't make head and a tail out of it. Lieutenant Stiles will see you now. Thanks. Howdy. What can I do for you, soldier? Well, first off, you can stop calling me what I ain't. What are you doing wearing an Army uniform? Covering my skin for the most part. Name? Hickok. Bill Hickok. Now, Lieutenant, get your hands off my desk, soldier. 
You can call me a lot of things, mister, but I sure wish you wouldn't call me that. It's like to give me the heaves. Get to the point. What do you want? Well, I came across a party of Cheyenne a little while back. Black Kettle's people. They were carrying repeaters. Henry's. Were they hostile? Well, some. Happens I know Black Kettle. We used to be friends. He taught me a lot about it's Indian men like ways. you, Hickok, make our task more difficult. What are you talking about? You encourage him. They lose all respect for a white man. Look at you. Disgrace to your uniform. <laughs> What's my uniform got to do with it? Everything. Right now, we got the tribes all scattered. There's a semblance of peace because the Indians know. They know they have to behave. If they don't, the army will punish them. They respect force. Discipline and force. Mister, somewhere along the way, we got off the track. You did, Hickok, not me. I'm saying as long as the Cheyenne see men like you wearing the uniform of the U.S. Army, we'll continue to have trouble. Did you do any fighting during the war? That isn't the point. I guess it isn't at that. Like you said, the only thing wrong with these uniforms is what goes inside them. Save it for Sunday, preacher. Run him out of town. This one, friend. Hit him again. Come on, hit him. Brother, look at me. I got the big, big sin on my shoulders. Now, you talk about your sin of lust. You talk about your sin of greed. That ain't nothing compared to my sin. I'm broke. <laughs> well, that's the biggest sin of all. Now, look, how much am I off? It ain't worth the wind that holds, not a red cent. Now, here's a mighty fine Union Army jacket. Seen all sorts of history. Shiloh, Bull Run, the wilderness. Look at this. A bullet hole came so close, I smelled like a singed chicken. <laughs> <laughs> now, what am I offering? I got hundreds of them, fella. <laughs> What? Just thanks. Looks like we both didn't make out so well, did we? They're tough customers. You couldn't sell your goods, I couldn't sell mine. That's the truth. Better luck next time. I mean, it, it sort of brings out the essence, as it were, if you follow me. Uh, communal bathing. Oh, yeah. My name's Estrick. I'm English. I'm Hickok. How do you do? Howdy. What do you call that? Huh? Oh, that. The monocle. A uh, dada, it helps. How's it stay in? Well, you know, I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yours? Yeah. I see. Say, absolutely marvelous. Look here. I'm a correspondent for the London Times. Oh, that's very kind of you. They sent me over here to do some articles. The American point of view, as it were. I wonder if you'll give me an interview. You know, a soldier's life in the West, and all that sort of thing. Well, sure, but I'm not a soldier anymore. I got out a while back. Oh, that's even better. Just what my reading public wants. You know, a discharged soldier seeking his fortune in the West. Absolutely marvelous. Don't mind a bit. Well, oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, after my bath, uh, where can I find you? Oh, I'll be around. Capital. Absolutely capital. Oh, Bill, that's the way you should look all the time. A born gentleman. Not too flashy. The best of taste.
Oh, if I had a son of my own, I could only wish that he'd be like you. You don't know how worried I've been these four years you've been away at the war. Anybody came to town, I'd ask them, have you seen my friend Bill Hickok? Anybody see me? <laughs> if they had, would I have been worried? <laughs> Do you realize, Bill, that I've known you since before you could grow hair on your chin? Abe, hey, the trouble with you is you should have been a mother. Who has time to get married? <laughs> you all right? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Take your hands off my wife, mister. Will Cody! Bill! <laughs> you son of a gun! When'd you get out of the army? When'd you get married? As soon as I could. That's when I got out. <laughs> you son of a gun! Oh, oh. Oh. Uh, my dear friend and a reprobate, William Butler Hickok. My wife, Louisa. Mr. Hickok. I'm very pleased to meet you, ma'am. It was uh, very kind of you to help me. It was a pleasure. I can't believe it. Married? <laughs> <laughs> the loving comforts of a warm hearth, Hickok. You haven't lived till you've tried it. Still splitting the breeze with that highfalutin talk, eh, Will? Hey, Cody, you in or out? Well, uh... That's all right, Will. I don't mind waiting. The warm hearth? It ain't a joke. I'll take you home, dear. And I'll take your cards. Oh, it's all right. Just leave those lay. Ain't enough there to cash in anyway. I'll fatten it for you. Your husband, ma'am. Your husband is a great shot and a fair to middle in horsemen. But he ain't got the card sense of a jackass. <laughs> Watch him, Bill. There may be some defalcating going on. I'm sitting in for Cody. Well, good luck, Bill. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, why aren't you going to stay to watch me scorch these gentlemen? Wait a ah, I've got business in Sultryville. The farm ladies are waiting for their combs and pins and calicos. Well, you have. Double shot of Gilligan's Breathless. And some better cards. found me. Shh. That man there, he's wearing my clothes. Who? Oh. That man, called himself Hickok. Smoking my cigars, too. Shh. Stone, bold as brass. Never heard of Bill Hickok stealing anything, never. Now, you hobble your lip, mister. And a hundred. Talk me out of it. There's your hundred, and I'll raise your fifty. Quick death. Fifty more. Cards, gentlemen? Three. I'll stand, Pat. That'll um, cost you a hundred to stay. There's 40, and I'll raise you 100. Got that? Plays a tune. It's for kids. I'll redeem that watch for 1,000. I'll redeem it for 2,000. Take it. All right, there's your 100, and 500 more. Call. All black. King High. Two kings. That ain't the hand I called. The hand I called is in your hat. Let's see it. Your hat.
What's your name? Latimer. Oh, yeah. Farm implements. I had to notch your ears for you. A man like you ought to be marked. I'll get these cashed in for you, Bill. Fine. Thanks. Mr. Hickok. I'm Marshal Hart. I know your reputation, mister. I admire the way you handled that just now. The way I see it, any man who had your reason to start shooting and didn't would make a first-rate peace officer. Oh, people are likely to get hurt when they're shooting. Uh, I see. Look here. You remember me, don't you? You know this man? He claims you stole his clothes. Oh, well, let's just say, uh, borrowed, shall we? <laughs> I can see you're not the sort of chap to steal. Uh, I mean, a thief would have taken my money, too, and Mr. Hickok certainly didn't do that. <laughs> no, uh, let's say I was looking for the chap who borrowed my suit and cigars. I'd rather like to have them back now. Well, yeah. that's just fine, Mr. Estrick. As a matter of fact, I was looking for you to return your things. Well, can I buy you a drink? Uh, how about me I deputizing you, Hickok, right now? Well, no thanks, Marshal. That badge would make me do a lot of things I don't want to do. And keep me from doing a lot of things I got a hankering to do. Come on. Well done, Rand. Most extraordinary. Marvelous. Here I come all the way from London to see the Wild West, and bang -o, I'm almost part of it myself. <laughs> Borrow your best. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Estrick. This here is the wildest woman in the whole Wild West. <laughs> Mr. Estrick's a newspaper man from England. This here is Calamity Jane. My word. Calamity day, huh? <laughs> Patty. Now, she's somebody you just got to interview. Well, capital. Uh, what do you say, Miss Calamity? Oh, I'll what? just leave you two to get acquainted. Well, I, 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 how about... Uh, uh, well, uh, thank you. Shut up. You come to pay a condolence call, you can rally your hawks out of here right now. For the bride and groom. Thank you, friend. Was there any defalcating going on? Well, I don't know about that, but there was cheating, all right. Looks like the army's coming. Yeah, that's Lieutenant Stiles. He's commanding here until they get a replacement. Real Indian eater with a big appetite. I know, I met him. Darn it. Cody, a courier just came in from Fort Lomas with a request for ammunition. Lost 90% of it in the storehouse fire. I'm uh, sending out a supply train today with ammo and rifles. I need a man to lead it who knows the country. The trail's clearly marked from here to Fort Lomas. There's the smell of Indian in the air. They'd like nothing better than to hit an ammunition train on the trail. We'll send it by a hooker's canyon. Right. I need a scout who knows that canyon. I'm told you're the only one who can get through. Lieutenant, Mr. Cody is no longer in the army. I know that, ma'am, but this is an emergency. There was an attack on Sultryville last night. Cheyenne wiped out most of the town. Any survivors? Brought him in just before I left. There was a man asking to see you, Hickok. Uh, Ireland was the name. Hurt bad? Bad enough. I'm going to town, Will. Wait up, I'll go with you. I won't be long, dear.
How's Abe? Asking for you. At ease, soldier. Abe? Abe, what happened? It was a bad thing, Bill. Women, children, they dragged them out. They never had a chance. Your friend, Black Kettle. I don't believe it. Was it Black Kettle, Abe? I don't know. I didn't get a chance to see. Lead that supply train. About those engines you met, how many of them were carrying repeaters? Most all of them. Maybe 20, 25 Braves. Led by Black Kettle? Yeah. The Crazy Knife was doing most of the war talk. They're all the same. Well, this is an act of war. As soon as we've delivered the supplies to Fort Lomas, we'll go after them. leaving for Hooker's Valley in Fort Lomas. Go and stay with his wife. Well, got an order or a command? He doesn't want her alone way out there in that cabin. And why didn't he come tell me himself? Well, he's saying a lot. He died goodbye to her. Told him I'll take care of it my way out. I don't know exactly where you're going, but I sure know where I'd like you to go. Will you do it? For her, yeah. At a girl. Bill? You know something? What? It's easier sliding up Niagara Falls than it is understanding a woman. Blast it, woman! Don't you swear at me. I won't have it. Then don't be putting words in my mouth. You heard that, Lieutenant. He needs someone who knows the valley, and I'm the only one who does. Now be reasonable. You ask me to be reasonable. You made me a solemn promise that we'd live together, make our home together. You think I don't want that? You think I'd rather go around dragging my navel in the dust with that toy soldier? If you must use that kind of language, I prefer it out of my hearing. Now, you listen to me, school mom, and stop worrying about the way I talk. There's been a massacre. People killed, skinned alive, and a lot of other things that ain't too pleasant. My God, that supply train might help to prevent it from happening again. Well, that's the way it is out here. We've got to live with it. I'm sorry. I wish you'd change your mind. Stay in town till I get back. No. This is my home. You say you have a job to do. So do I. Right here. And I'll only be gone a few days. And the next time. Yeah, Louisa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ready to move out, sir. Very good, Sergeant. Going to Fort Lomas. 
Cody's leading. I don't know what trail. Figure you'd be out of town by now. I don't see no law dog's badge on you. You really think I need one? Here you are. Ah. So I took care of Will. Calamity said she'd be glad to help out. She's going out to stay at the cabin now. I'm obliged. You coming with us? No, I got something else to do. Something that won't wait. I'll be seeing you. Be seeing you, curtain hanger. Good luck, Cody. All right, Sergeant, let's move him out. Forward! Oh. What was that? Oh, just some old coyote with a toad stuck in his gullet. <laughs> Couldn't be Indians, could it? Honey, when you hear something yelling in the night around here, it's just a varmint. Because when you don't hear nothing at all, it's an engine. Here. Take a suck of this. Even babies love it. My, that's a pretty dress. Here, why don't you try it on? Oh, I ain't had a dress on since I was 13. <laughs> but if you promise not to tell nobody, I will. <laughs> Jane, you're a pretty woman. What have you got against being feminine? Why, I don't have nothing against being female. But it sure has got a lot against me. I don't know how you growed up, but I was born in the back room of a saloon. I was on my own when I was 10. Didn't take me long to find out that women have no choice. They're bound to either be a calico queen or a drudge. I wasn't planning on being either one. You see, Men has got the whole world right in the pouch. And you gotta show them that you're as strong as they are. Of course, if you run after them, they run away. And if you run away and try to get them to follow, honey, they get tired mighty quick. If you're honest with them and you tell them what you think, well, then they get scared because they think that you see right through them. If you hold in the reins tight, well, then they buck and stray. So, maybe you're gentle and, and thoughtful, and you give them a little freedom. Then they think that you don't care for them at all. If you kiss them, they wipe it off, or they wipe it in. Either way, it's the same thing, because they don't kiss back. And if they do, it's not the right time or the right place, and they're thinking of something else. Calamity Jane, that's me. I dress like a man, I fight like a man, I cuss and I drink like a man. Otherwise, I'd be, I'd be sewing on his buttons and, and washing his dirty clothes and cooking up his mush and waiting around all day long for him to come home. Just a dumb squaw. Like me. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't mind doing all those things for Will. Hey, come to think of it, how did you ever get Will, Cody? Will is always trying to improve himself. Uh -huh. And I try to help him but not too much. You see, when I found out where Will was strong, I submitted. And when I found out where he was weak, I forgot it. I think he's the noblest man in the world, and I let him know I think so. 
If I ever called Hickok noble, he'd clout me from here to the Mississippi River. <laughs> he ain't noble, he's human. Oh, Lordy, I just wish he was more human. There. <laughs> Is that me or the mirror? <laughs> oh, I know what you need. Here, try this on. Well, I don't even look like Calamity Jane. I look like Miss Martha Jane Canary. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Louise, let's drink to that. Oh, I don't really think it's good for babies. Oh, it is. It... What do you mean? Am I going to be an aunt? Yes. <sighs> I bet Will Cody is crowing. Oh, he doesn't know. Well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Well, I wasn't sure until lately, and then he was leaving, and I couldn't. Only one thing thicker in the head than a man, and that's a woman. <sighs> oh, good luck, honey. Now, give me a pair of them high button shoes. I feel like dancing a jig. <laughs> I want you to light out for town just as fast as you can. Move. Howdy. Come right on in, fellas. That smells bad. You should get away for yourself, Charlie. How about some coffee? Nice coffee. Nice warm. Nice coffee. Oh, 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 oh. Where is Cody? You speak English? Understand. Oh, I'll make my big mouth. Where is Cody? I don't know. You Cody's woman, you know. He never said. Which trail Cody take? I told you, I don't know. Now we go. Tracks around. Let's get on them.
Hi, Crazy Knife. I come to trade. How much for the squaw? Squaw? Shut up. I know she ain't much, but I'm willing to make a deal. Oh, you dirty dog. You ain't trading for me like I was a flea-bitten skunk pal. She talks too much. And she's as honorary as a bear with a itch. What do you give me? Sure. You give me gun. No, Bill, don't. Now the woman. No. Only black cattle can give. All right. Untie her. I'll take her on my horse. party dress and a masquerade. They came to the cabin. Luisi got away. I had this dress on and they thought I was her. I didn't tell them any different. Bill, you were wonderful brave, giving yourself up like that, just to rescue me. Wasn't doing it for you. I'm looking for black cattle. Figured they'd take me to it. Anyway, I owe you a lift. words of peace, but you sent your braves to kill. Black Kettle does not lie. I sent no braves. Cheyenne warriors attacked Sultraville. They killed women and children. They killed my friend. The white man lies. Ask him why soldiers go from Hay City with guns. Ask Crazy Knife why he took this woman captive. She is Cody's woman. Cody is with the soldiers. She knows why they go to kill Cheyenne and our brother, the Sioux. I am not Cody's woman. Is it true, Hickok? She's not Cody's woman. Is it true about soldiers and guns? Yes. But they do not go to make war. They carry supplies for the army. He lies! I look on trail to Fort Lomas. No soldiers. Black cattle. Remember. Your sons. Who speaks the truth? Hickok. Or Crazy Knife. I never lied to you. Crazy Knife is my blood. Truth is stronger than blood. Crazy Knife says there were no soldiers on the trail to Fort Lomas. Then the soldiers planned to attack us. What trail do they take to attack my people? What trail, Hickok? Across the Sunrise Mountain. You speak too quick. Hickok says truth is stronger than blood. What is the truth, Hickok? Who sold you those repeating rifles? I cannot say. And I cannot say. If truth is stronger than blood, fire is stronger than Hickok! <laughs> You got guts, girl. Bill, I brought you into this. I sure am calamity. You did not, I told you. Jane, you got one thing to do, stay alive. But I don't care about anything else, Bill. I love you. I don't want to live without you, Bill. Well, if I 
had the choice between that fire and saying I loved you, I guess I'd say it. Black Kettle ain't giving me no choice. Bill, this ain't no time to be making jokes. All right, then listen. Cody and his men are dependent upon you. No matter what they do to me, don't talk. Ready to tell us? I already told you. Now I want my watch back. He's got it. Take it. Again, I ask you, Peacock. Which trail does Cody take? No trail against your people. Now you will see how strong a fire is. Stronger than Hickok. Stronger than any man. Oh, Burn! You hear me? I'm gonna live forever just on hating you! Good. Don't forget it. that you should die. I ask again. What trail? I can't tell you that and you know it. The soldiers do not ride against you. Not all white men are your enemies. Not all Indians are your friends. He is your enemy. Tell me where Cody and the soldiers go. He told you! He told you the truth! <laughs> Must be an end to killing. Take him down. Black Kettle is an old woman. He eats the white man's toad. I hear the voice of the ghost dancer. He will come soon. Then all the Cheyenne who are dead will rise. And on that day, the guns of our enemies will bend and no bullets will enter our skins. We will dance the ghost dance and win every battle. Peace is our enemy. Black Kettle is our enemy. I say he runs alone. Who runs with me? The Cheyenne must live to teach our sons our ways. Follow Crazy Knife, and there will not be one of us left. I will find Cody and the soldiers, and they will know the hate of the Cheyenne. Who runs with me? <laughs> Moving riders moving this way. Call in the flankers, no bugles. Take cover and don't fire till I do. Right. You three men? I take cover, no fire, now double time. Ho! Hurry up, get him out of there. Ah, round the bend, hurry up. Oh, 
us a lucky thing we're on the same side. We were following a Cheyenne trail. After we lost it, I thought it'd be best to join up with you. Uh, more trouble? War party kidnapped Calamity Jane. She was with my wife. This is Cody's safe. Calamity got her away in time. I'm riding with you to Fort Lomas. Sergeant, get the men moving. <laughs> Cody? This is Snowden's Canyon. Less than halfway there. Close that up! Those are my men, Cody. They're mine until we get to Fort Loomis. I'm the senior officer. You're a civilian. You'll transmit orders through me. I know where you're strong, and I give in. I know your weak points, and I ain't never gonna mention them. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Mm-hmm. I love you. Uh, now, Jane, I, I ain't putting aside the fact that I'm very fond of you, but I got a restless toe I can't tie up with anybody. I think that frying over the fire you got back there softened you up a bit. Not enough for what you're after. I got a restless toe, too. I got a piece of your shadow, and I ain't never gonna let go. What about my watch? What about it? I want it back. You gave it to me. You ain't taking it back. Besides that, it's got our picture, and I ain't never given that away. Don't you get any ideas about that picture. I just couldn't cut you out without cutting my nose off.
soon as it gets dark, we're pulling out of here. Who are you moving? Sergeant? Yes, sir. How do we stand on east water? Figure two, two and a half days. We'll stay. They've got us pinned down. We won't have a chance. With all due respect to the lieutenant. You can't outfight Indians on the move. We stand our ground, they lose two to our one. Well, they're smart soldiers. They'll pull out. You're guessing. A couple long Indian wars behind that guess. And tonight I'm sending a trooper to Fort Lomas for reinforcements. If them Cheyenne ain't fools, they'll be waiting for something like that. It won't work. It worked at the Platte River Massacre. <sighs> After they lost three couriers, we can't spare that many men. This time, I'll do the guessing. Thank you, sir. If you know a prayer, say it for him. City fast. Get that Lieutenant Stiles and tell him to put a burr on your saddle. To find us at Snowden's Canyon. Take care, Bill. See ya. Tell Will Cody he's gonna be a papa. <sighs> if a shock of that don't kill him, them Indians don't have a chance. <laughs> Trouble? Nothing we can't handle. Hey, Cuck! I thought you were at Hay City. Your Cheyenne kidnapped Calamity Jane. I've been looking for her. Well, she's on her way to you for help. The army never gets nothing right. You know that Hay City hasn't got enough men left to send reinforcements. Now we're gonna have to break out. Oh, we're about even with them now, Lieutenant. A couple more days, we'll have them outnumbered. In a couple of more days, we'll be starving. You ever eat mule meat? Sergeant! Well, with the whole army pinned down up here, I'm not sure that baby's gonna have a papa after all. What baby? Your baby. What? How? What? When? Who told you? Well, Calamity told me. The rest of the answers I'll leave up to you. Baby? Baby? A father? Well, you ain't the mother, that's for sure. Now, Bill, you tell it to me again, slowly. Well... Once there was this dang fool of an Indian scout. And he was as vain as a blue tail owl. He wasn't satisfied chasing buffalo. He had to go find himself a school teacher. Windy, ain't it? All right, soldier, let's see how good you are with that piece. 
Come on, get back to your business. I'll be with you as soon as I get this leak stopped. We got trouble enough without that. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. You think it's going to be marked for life? <laughs> when the ball breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come, baby. Cradle and all. <laughs> Fine, Trooper. I just need a little sleep, that's all, sir. There'll be plenty of time for that later. Lieutenant? They're tired, but they'll do. Get awake, man. Get awake. <laughs> Sir, he just ain't listening. Wake up. Wake up. There ain't no use laying there like that. The lieutenant ordered you to wake up. That's enough. Get back to your post. It ain't his fault, sir. It just ain't his fault. He just got too tired, that's all. Now he's going to have grass waving over him, nice and peaceful. It's time to go to sleep. Oh, it's time to go to sleep. Sack your saddle. Sack your saddle. Go to sleep. It's time to go to sleep. I've listened to you long enough, Cody. Now we're gonna start fighting my way. What way is that? We're mounting up and getting out. And what do you figure them Indians gonna be doing while we're getting out? Well, they'll be lined up giving us a salute, Will. We're gonna charge them, Cody. Something we should have done a long time back. Give them a taste of cold steel. Oh, mister, you better get in out of the sun. With all due respect to the lieutenant, they're carrying repeating rifles. We do as you're suggesting, it'd be plain suicide. What do you call this? Hold up like mongrel dogs waiting to be slaughtered. Styles, you take his advice. I'm warning you. You ain't warning nobody. If you think I'm gonna follow you out there while you wave your toy sword around, you're mistaken. We try to break through, we're all gonna end up just like that courier you sent out, and that was at night. Oh, no, I hold you directly responsible for Schwimmer's death, Cody. Of course one man couldn't make it, but in force. If we'd done what I wanted then, we would've got through. My wife ain't been married long enough to be made a widow of. Those are tough, smart Indians out there, just as tough and smart as we are, and don't you forget that. I did not receive a commission in the United States Army in order to crawl into a hole and let the enemy dictate to me how to fight. Now, I'm ordering the men to mount up, Cody, and I'm ordering you, and I'm ordering you both. We're gonna charge them. See now why I wanted to be a civilian? There's more of them riding in. It's a new bunch, sir. <laughs> Crazy guy won't be able to hold out, huh? Take position, prepare to fire! Hold your fire! Ready! Hold your fire! Black Kettle, he's stopping them. Put down your guns! There will be peace. No, we must kill them all. Look, you have lost your best warriors. I'm ordering you to prepare to fire! Don't! Don't shoot! First you must kill me and your brothers. Then you may battle the white man.
will be no more battle. You're hurt? A little thing. Sorry. We also have our crazy knife. It was always so with both our people. I should have believed you, Hiccup. I should have known you speak the truth. Your soldiers did not come to attack us. What made you change your mind? The white woman came to tell me. She asked me to return this. Is she all right? Yes. Go quickly with your man, Hickok. Farewell. Goodbye, Black Kettle. Out of here. Black Kettle's wounded bad. If he dies, Crazy Knife will take over. Dick Ack. You're under arrest. Well, that's your worry. Right now, I got something else to take care of. I'll take those weapons, mister. I wouldn't want you to try. Don't be a fool. Let me talk to him. I'll be responsible. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Get the men mounted up. We'll be moving out. All right, sir. Troopers! Get the animal and gear together. Been here long enough. We're moving out. I sure do wish you'd hobble that lift of yours. Me? Do me a favor. Ride back to the fort with us. Nope. What could be so important that you'd risk a bullet in the back? This. And the man that's selling them. A couple of days won't make any difference. Well, to me, I'm riding to Hayes City right now. What if Lieutenant Stiles says no? Like I said, that's his worry. You think it isn't mine, too? What am I supposed to do, stand here and watch you shoot it out with the U.S. Army? It's up to you. You give me your word, Bill. You'll be there when I get back. Maybe. You talk straight, Bill. I'm sticking my neck way out. You may not know it, but Stiles can arrest you if he wants to. Oh, I may be able to talk him out of it, but I've got to have your word. Here comes your toy soldier. I mean it, Bill. You've got to be in Hayes City when I get back. I'll think about it. And I'll kiss a little mother for you when I see you. Hold! Don't do it, Lieutenant. You, re you realize what you're doing, Cody? I know this much. If it weren't for Hickok, none of us would be wearing our scalps right now. You're a two of a kind, aren't you? I mean, uh, living like those stinking engines? If it doesn't matter to you how many of my men die just so you can play hero with your Cheyenne friends, huh? I'll tell you, Styles. And I ain't speaking for Hickok neither, but just for me. There ain't a hair between you and the meanest Indian I ever met. Come to think on it, he's got to jump on you. Because I know what kind of critter he is. You don't even rattle. <laughs> now, you've got your choice. You want me to lead that supply train into Fort Lomas, you say so. Otherwise, I'm heading into Hay City. Orders. Where to lead the supply train to Fort Lomas? Well, what do you want? I expect you to at least carry out that order. All right, then. Let's go. Glad you're back, Hickok. Said I'm glad you're back. I ain't changed my mind, Marshal. Yeah, I'm a stubborn man. Whiskey, Bill? Yep. You seen Latimer? Not lately. 
Anyone here see John Latimer? Any trouble, sir? Not for me, there ain't. He took over Gifford's warehouse. Might be there. Thanks. Take care now, here. Stop the fight. Well, who do you think sent black cattle, you turnhead? Oh, yeah, it seems to me I owe you something for that. Yeah. Go buy a jug of Killigan's Breathless. We'll paint our tonsils later. He's carrying one of our rifles. If he knows we're selling them, we're going to have to kill him. in some uh, kerosene, lamps. And now's the time to buy. Price is going nowhere but up. I'm interested in repeater rifles. Try the U.S. Army. Your rifles. But we don't have any for sale. What's in stock up there? Drop your gun belt. Drop it! Excuse for you to have advantage of me, you hear? The charges against you will be three. Each is punishable by death if found to be true. 
One, you incited soldiers of the United States to refuse to obey an order of their commanding officer. Two, you fired upon that officer and prevented him from killing an enemy. The third charge is that you killed a soldier of the United States Army. Number one is a sack of dingbats, and you know it. Two, you were trying to kill an ally. Three, that soldier was a gun runner, a traitor. That has to be proven. There's no other witness to that but you, Mr. Hickok, and your testimony is self-serving. Well, them repeating rifles you found in the fire proved something. Only that they were there. Which brings me to you, Mr. Cody. There will be two charges. Inciting to mutiny and assaulting an officer of the United States Army. Well, you're lucky, Will. They can only hang you twice. It's three times for me. You think these charges are a joke? You'll find that they're not. I've read the charges, Lieutenant. They're very serious. Which of you is Hickok? Me. Ah, yes. At ease, Lieutenant. Now, about those charges. A hundred years ago, the two of you would have been drawn and quartered. Hanging's no pleasure either. And you, sir. While under fire, you refused to obey the order of your commanding officer. Colonel, it was my job to guide that supply train to Fort Lomas. I figured it'd be easy to do it alive rather than dead. Are you saying that Lieutenant Stiles is wrong in ordering a charge against the enemy? Let's just say he was half right and half wrong. Explain yourself. Well, sir, he was right for the Indians, but he was wrong for us. <laughs> what have you got to say about the assault charge? I think maybe the lieutenant got a little mixed up. Among other things, I didn't like the idea of him shooting Hickok in the back. Have you men been offered defense counsel? No, sir. We weren't figuring on needing any. Well, you better start figuring, because you'll need one for your court-martial. I, uh, would be glad to serve as your counsel, if you wish. Name is Custer, George Armstrong Custer. I am the new commanding officer here. Uh, sir, under the circumstances... Under the circumstances, Lieutenant, I'd like to consult with the accused alone. Dismissed, Lieutenant. Seems to me that you men are in a pack of trouble. I sure wish I could see somehow of ensuring that court would find you innocent. Uh, very extenuating circumstances, sir. You sound like a lawyer, Mr. Cody. Now, there might, there just might be a way. Of course, it'll depend upon you two gentlemen. Now, Mr. Hickok, a friend of mine in Hayes City, Marshal Hart, he speaks very highly of you. Now, it just might be, might be, mind you, that I could convince that uh, court that you were acting as a U.S. Deputy Marshal serving your country. No. No thanks. Mr. Cody, those extenuating circumstances, I think I might be able to make those a mighty powerful defense if I could count on your services as a guide and a scout for the Army. I figure I'd rather take my chances with the court martial. It could go very hard on you men. It'd be too bad. Yeah, too bad. All right, gentlemen, I'll see you later. I'm releasing both of you in each other's custody. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Are you sure you won't change your minds? Never. Never. All right, ladies and gents. Buckle your belts and follow your kids. Jane, I've been ordered to escort you. Well, don't that beat all? Hey, shut down, man! Roll your wheels! We're moving out! Oh, uh, Deputy, I thought you was in Hayes City. I was. They got me playing nursemaid to her in a shipment of gold. Well, what do you think I'm doing? Come on, Bill. Get on up here with me. We don't have all day to have you stand around here jawing with the army. 
See what I mean? Now I gotta listen to that. Maybe we'd better off getting court-martialed. Thank you for watching. Please check back soon for more uploads.